Welcome to Electro Online. In this series of videos, starting with this video here, we're going to explore how to use the technique of trigonometric substitution to solve three very difficult integrations if we didn't use that particular technique. The three integrations are the square root of a squared minus x squared, the square root of a squared plus x squared, and the square root of x squared minus a squared. Now, what we do is we substitute in for x a particular value. In the first case, we let x equal a times the sine of theta. In the second case, we'll let x equal a times the tangent of theta. And in the third case, we'll let x equal a times the secant of theta. Why do we do that? Well, that's what these triangles are for. Take a look. On the first triangle, if we let a be the hypotenuse and x be the opposite side, then the adjacent side becomes a squared minus x squared, that is from the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Notice that the sine of theta is defined as the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is x over a. So therefore, x divided by a becomes the sine of theta. On the second triangle, we'll let a be this side, x be that side, and then the hypotenuse is simply the square root of x squared plus a squared, and that is again Pythagorean theorem. Notice that by definition, the tangent of this angle is x over a, which is what we find here. The tangent of theta is x divided by a when we plug the a over there. And finally, the third triangle, notice that if we let x be the hypotenuse and a be the adjacent side, then the opposite side becomes the square root of x squared minus a squared. Now we realize that if we take the cosine of this angle, and let's, let's show that here, if we take the cosine of theta, that is equal, to, by definition, a divided by x. But the secant of theta is the inverse of the cosine, which is therefore x divided by a. Therefore, x can be written as a times the secant of theta, which is what we have there. Those three substitutions for x into our integral will make it much easier to find the integration. And so the objective then always is, when you recognize that you're dealing with one of these types of integrations, and any derivative of that type of integration, of course, derivatives may be a bad word, but there's all kinds of ways in which we can come up with a situation where this appears somewhere in the integral. In the numerator, in the denominator, multiply times x, divided by x, multiply by x squared, and so forth. But in each case, that substitution will allow us to find the integral of those types of integral. Now, on the next video, I'll show you the whole slew of different types of integrals that can be solved by using the simple trigonometric substitution. So on the next video, you can see how many different ways that this can be applied to so many different kinds of integrations that otherwise would be very difficult to integrate. So stay tuned and see how many ways we can apply this kind of technique.